All right, Police Week. It is something that we've been uh, chatting about quite a bit here on the podcast for a little while. Hey, by the way, welcome to the Airdot Podcast, live from the ASP Financial Studios and Fly in the Wall Productions on Main Street in Barrie. Uh, I'm J.D. We have with us uh, two police officers, uh, both Washington County Sheriffs Mark Poulin and Brett Meyer. Uh, welcome to you both, gentlemen, and thank you so much for coming in and uh, spending some time with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. We're glad to be here, sir. Yeah. Uh, busy day for you, I'm guessing, today. Uh, thank you for taking some some time out to, to run in here and, and hop on camera with us. Any excuse to be out of the office is a good Ooh. thing. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. I mean, any excuse to take off all the, the belt and the equipment and the tasers and the body weights and everything you guys carry around. Summertime is here, so yeah. What what are those? Yeah, yeah. What what are the, what are the, what is what are, what do those things weigh? What's what's all that? What are you carrying around every day? Twenty five to thirty pounds. Depends it? on the individual and what you choose or choose not to wear. Oh. So somewhere between the high twenties and uh, high thirties. So high twenties minimum. Yes. What you, and look at you, do guy, you two. You look. You both look like you're eighteen years old carrying around all that weight. You must be <laughs> not. In, marvelous shape <laughs> round uh, is a shape yes yes round is a shape. <laughs> yes uh so what's happening with police week this is something that is uh is pretty important to vermont and it, it's a uh, it's a week where of course we know that uh that farva is going to be uh handing out many uh challenge coins and uh tokens of of appreciation um uh, but is there anything else that's 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 being done that's being recognized in the in the department uh, in terms of uh, awareness or or anything that you guys are are doing uh, or is it just simply we're starting to buckle up here for the summertime fun unfortunately we're starting to buckle up for the summertime activities i'm going brett we're going to bring you closer to that sure. mic so i can hear you better yeah, we're starting to buck up for summer activities as we uh, step in next week's the start of a clicker ticket yeah. in the area. Uh, so it'll be a statewide campaign, or I should say it's a nationwide campaign, but Vermont has its own campaign. Is that the Governor's Highway Safety Program? That is yes. correct, sir. All right. So what is what is that all about? Because y you're saying it starts, um, I think, May 23rd. Correct. And goes through the 5th of June. That's correct. It's a, it's a two-week two, two week campaign. It's been happening annually for, I don't know. 30 years or so? Yeah, 30-plus years. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, basically, it's, a, it's an occupant protection campaign, trying to get people to uh, be more aware and, and be buckled up. So why, 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 why just uh, two weeks? In other words, during that two-week period, uh, is the ticket higher? Uh, what's what's so special about uh, two weeks? No, actually, it's just a campaign period. May is one of the big months uh, for, in fact, uh, unrestrained motorist crashes in, in this state. I'm sure it's as well nationwide. Uh, so they've selected to do it this these two weeks. Obviously, we have a zero tolerance policy for for occupant protection. Period. Um, so no matter when, no matter, no matter when, when, that is correct. Yeah, it fines are no different now than they are at Christmas time. Okay. The fines are, are the same. Speaking of, of fines, people get a little confused when it comes to the seatbelt fines. And here in Vermont, it is a little weird. So a seatbelt ticket is $25 by itself, $50 for your second violation, and then 100 for the third and subsequent. And unfortunately, we can't just write the seatbelt ticket here in the state of Vermont. We have what's called secondary enforcement. Mm -hmm. So if you're not wearing a seatbelt and we see you drive by, we have to look at something else going on. Did you not use a turn signal? Were you speeding? Did you have a taillight out? Something weird like that. And that will be the primary reason for stopping the vehicle. You mentioned this last time I had you on the podcast. We did. So if you guys witness someone not wearing a seatbelt, Above the age of 18, yes. we can't stop for just that. Above the age of 18, you can't pull over just for that. Correct. Why? Because this is what the legislature decided the rules are. So so if you're 16, 17... That's a primary offense. That's a primary offense, yeah. yes. And that, that then becomes a child restraint violation. Okay. Confusing much? Yeah. So if you're, so if you're 17... Uh, 16, 17, you're driving down the road, no seatbelt. Yep. 
you guys witness that. That is a primary uh, violation. Right. We can, can stop yeah. just for that. Yep. Same, same as if the passenger in the vehicle, the kid's just leaving school, and there's a, one of the kids didn't buckle up. It's the same violation. Still in the parking lot. That's if it's on a if it's on highway. a public highway, correct? Yes. So if you're 18 or over, yes, and you're not wearing your seatbelt, police witness that. Can they be pulled over? If there's a primary violation, yes. There has Perfect to be example, something else. Five miles an hour over speed limit, ten miles an hour over speed limit, whatever the case may be. But if there's you have to have that primary violation yeah. to initiate the actual seatbelt violation. So, so if you're over eighteen or over, and you're only not wearing your seatbelt, um, you can't stop them. That's correct. You can't pull them over. <laughs> but Title Twenty Three, the the motor vehicle law, is about an inch and a half, two inches thick. So more often than not, we can find something. Yeah. My God. I mean, that's, or, or, that's crazy. Unfortunately, Confused. the amount of crashes that are occurring and the amount of unstrained, unrestrained motorists involved in those crashes is still high. It should be just across the board, no tolerance, uh, you know. Well, we've, we wish for that. Our, uh, our legislature is, has to make that decision. Not sure why... It has to be that complicated. Puzzling uh, choice. to me. Uh, unfortunately, I still feel it's a choice. Um, choice. To be able to not buckle up in certain circumstances. Well, it's a choice in New, in New Hampshire to not wear a helmet on your motorcycle. But, Which, uh, as, as motorcyclists, us both, we just scratch our heads on that one. People I'm are driving not, in Vermont. They dude. get to the border, stop, take their helmet off, and continue on their way. It's like, I don't think your head just got harder on the border. No. That's something that that's always baffled me. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, I don't know, man. I just can't imagine it. Plus, not to mention the the flies that you're going to get in your teeth and, and in your <laughs> eyes. Uh, but but anyway, uh, so so click it or ticket. Uh, the fines don't change. They do not. They do not. During, it's just a concentrated effort to really be watching. That for, is correct. Correct. We Are actually, there a- we have designated areas that we go in. I actually set up a schedule. We mm. have designated areas of different towns that we were going to hit, that we're going to hit on particular days. And it's sending a message to those areas that uh, we're serious about seatbelt enforcement. Now, I'm not going to tell you where I live, but, and I know you can find <laughs> out. But I, <laughs> oh, stop it, Raylene. But, but, I, but I, I've been known a time or two to, you know, I'm in a rush. I'm coming out of the driveway. I'll buckle once I'm driving. Before you put it in gear, just before it's in gear. I know. I, you know, I have a friend, I swear, uh, I have a friend who will not put the car in gear until I'm buckled, and it pisses me off. And I'm like, That's why are we friend. sitting here waiting? Come on, dude, let's get going. And and he won't tell me he'll, he'll, he'll unless I ask, what's going on? How, we've been sitting there for five minutes. You need to buckle. He's uh, the one that would get the violation, so. Driver. Correct. Yep. Always. Mm -hmm. Almost. Almost always. Wow. I'm, uh, it's a bad habit. It's a bad habit. I'll get, you know, I'll I'll, I'll buckle as soon as I hit the road. There are ways, gentlemen, uh, to very uh, creatively buckle yourself once you've noticed the police officer. We see it often. Yes. Come on. <laughs> you think you can do it without Come being... <laughs> do you really see it? You do Absolutely. See it. People, you can tell when lot. people are moving. You can yeah. see the... Stop that. The, uh, the, the common thing for me anyways is you when we observe, um, I look for the buckle, which is usually up by the shoulder or up by the B-pillar, yeah. and you can see the buckle dangling there, and suddenly you get them stopped, and the buckle's gone, and they're seat belted. It's like, why weren't you buckled earlier? Well, I was. Well, it's kind of hard to do when the buckle is up by your shoulder. It's common in stop signs. They see see the cruiser and you see them. Come on, really? That, that's an every, that's an everyday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there's 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 some interesting ways though. You know, you reach up for the sun visor or or to reach up for the rear view mirror and adjust that, putting all your focus over here while you're. Whoosh. That's the same as the cell phone. They have it in front of them and throw it to the side. You've seen that too. Oh yes. oh, yes. Yeah. What's the ticket for no seatbelt? I think you said earlier, Mark. It's 
Well, here's where it gets confusing. It's twenty five, fifty, or a hundred dollars. Wait a second. You're saying in Vermont we're going to get confusing here? <laughs> so where it gets confusing is it has to be attached unless you're below eighteen for that child restraint. It has to be attached to the primary reason for the stop. So say you get stopped for defective equipment, your headlight or taillight is out. It'll be attached to that violation. So it'll be the fine for the primary reason for the stop plus the twenty five fifty or one hundred. Twenty five fifty or one hundred. Perfect belt. example would be like vehicle not inspected, it's a hundred and five dollar fine. So we stop you for that the inspired inspection sticker, not wearing your seatbelt. So there's a hundred and five tack on twenty five for the first offense. If it's second offense, fifty and then a hundred. So it gets say expensive. first offense it turns into one hundred and thirty instead of one hundred and five. Okay. Yeah. Wow. What what kind of excuses do you get from most time it's more they forget or yeah. I just don't wear a seatbelt. There are some I people are just adamant that they're not going to wear a seatbelt. Because my friend got in a crash one time, and if he was wearing it, it would have choked him. Heard that one. Yep. We hear that a lot. Yep. Wow. Uh, we got a question here. Wasn't there a crash last night with four people being ejected because they weren't buckled? I haven't heard about I it. I haven't but heard about it. Randolph. Randolph. Ah. Possibly. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, darn. Wow. So um, stop stop point checkpoints for this uh, click it or ticket campaign. Will we have any of that? Checkpoints are more of a, a, a DUI matter versus a, a seatbelt matter. Okay. At this point, it's more manpower oriented having yeah. to do with checkpoints. Everybody's low on manpower. Yeah. I'm not going to make a promise whether we will or we won't. It may come around a corner, see the signage for a checkpoint, and, and have a checkpoint. I'm not going to. Say we are or we aren't. I've heard, I don't know that there's any truth to this, but I've heard that when you're going through toll stops in uh, New Hampshire and Massachusetts, that there are cameras that will, if you're, if, if you're not wearing your seatbelt, bang. They take a, grab a, there's a photo of your license plate, and you automatically get a, a ticket in the mail. I have not heard that. Not, not a clue. Not, not sure how the rules work in, in those states, but in the state of Vermont, you actually need to know who the operator is and be able to identify the operator to be able to ticket the operator themselves, not just a registered vehicle, which in other states, they can actually ticket the registered operator. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That's why no red light cameras and speed cameras here in Vermont. Yeah. yeah. What is that? The what, red light cameras and yeah, speed cameras? speed cameras. Yeah, what is that? Um, it, it's very common. Like the speed cameras, It you'll have a, a, a unit somewhere. They can be mobile or they can be fixed that has a radar detector, radar gun in it, same yeah. type of thing we use, and it reads the traffic. And when somebody is going over the threshold of whatever speed, it snaps a photo of the car, and they can look at the registration and send them a violation in the mail. And we have that in Vermont? We do not, we do not. because you have to identify the operator here. The operator. Versus other states, they don't care. It, whoever owns the vehicle is getting it. Interesting. Wow. And then you're going to get into a huge fight with your uh, sister-in-law. <laughs> wow. Wow, that can get messy fast. Um, what about, uh, I mean, here we are. And you guys know better than anyone. Uh, we're right in front of Memorial Day. This is the beginning of the beginning. We've got Memorial Day. We've got Father's Day. We've got uh, the 4th of July. Um, it's going to be a long, hot summer. This is when, frankly, uh, we recoil a little bit as human beings who have been cooped up uh, all winter and we're very anxious to get out and get crazy, um, whether it's a barbecue or a party or what what have you. Um, let's talk about drinking and driving. What's the difference between DWI and DUI? Same thing. Same term. Same thing. Same thing. A older term DWI was years ago driving well intoxicated yeah versus now it's driving under the influence which encompasses drug use as well not necessarily just alcohol okay so and, and you know and we were talking this morning about uh, retail marijuana and what's what's going to be happening here in Vermont and uh, I think it's anyone's guess exactly what's going to happen we're, we're still waiting for for all this but is is that something that uh, are you concerned about? Um, do you think it's going to be more prevalent, DUI, if 
things go in favor of retail pot shops popping up everywhere. I don't know if the retail is going to make an effect. The fact that it's been uh, decriminalized, yeah. I think, has already made it That's an issue. Um, people think it's legal of, okay, I can smoke it whenever I want, and then they don't think about getting in a car versus alcohol. There's been you know, 40 years of hammering away, don't drink and drive. There hasn't been that, that same programming effect for don't smoke and drive. What, what, are, the, what are the fines re- related to that? Are they the same as alcohol? Is it is DUI intoxicated? Is DUI, is, is, DUI is, DUI is DUI across the board. Okay. Um, I, I don't have the stats with me today in reference to what the increase for DUI drug is, but just listening to the radio alone, the DRE activity is high. So the amount of uh, DUI drug has increased drastically. DRE is a drug, a drug recognition, recognition expert, expert which correct. is a, a police officer who has uh, special credentials That's and correct. training. Yes. Yep. To, to recognize the That's different forms intent. of impairment. Yes. They, yeah, they, they actually are level. Most all officers now, which I believe here soon, all officers will have to be trained in what's called A-RIDE, which is Advanced Roadside, roadside Impaired Driving Enforcement. <laughs> enforcement <laughs> level, which is a, a baseline training having to do with drug recognition. We go to that level. Once we feel that we have somebody that's under the influence of drugs, then we call in a DRE. And they take it to the next step. Yeah. We don't have that many in Vermont. What do we have, 50, 60, somewhere in that ballpark? That I'm not sure at this point. I know the number is increasing. I know they just uh, were looking to do another class. So so if you suspect something, and it's not always, hey, uh, Cheech and Chong, roll the windows down and the smoke comes out and the red eyes, uh, it's not always that Absolutely that obvious. Not. No. So a lot of times it's you get somebody out of the car, you do your, your normal field sobrieties, and then they, they blow in the, the PBT roadside, and they're not showing they're intoxicated via alcohol, which is a .08. Mm. And uh, then it becomes of, okay, they're obviously impaired on something going to that next level and calling for the DRE to figure it out. And you, you, you recognize that by oh, different, different things. The Just, things we're trained to, to, to spot. Very common. Eyes. Eyes is a big deal on roadside that we look at, or I should say even in the car that we look at. Um, whether it's dilated or or uh, extremely po- small pupils, um, we use that as as an advance, depending on whether or not there's alcohol on board or not, and then we continue with questioning from there. Hmm. How long does it take to get a DRE there? Depends on where they are. Where they are. Right. <laughs> there's actually a uh, on-call system for uh, DREs, yeah. so there's one one number that you call, and they can be coming from anywhere within the state. So you might be camped out on the side of the road for a little while. Uh, actually, no. You you will do what you do on roadside, determine that you feel that they're under the influence of drugs or alcohol, and at that point you bring them back to the office for processing. Ah. And most cases they'll meet you at the office. The DRE. That's yes, ah, correct. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to be out on the road and take yeah. some Sitting chances. there. Okay. Dumb questions, but yeah. I don't know if you bring you you know the lawn chair and the umbrella. And, uh, <laughs> but... So so what what does what does the DRE do then? I mean, are they are, are we talking about like blood work here or they do deal with some pulse work and blood pressures and then uh, all kinds of different things. It's re- real hard to explain here. I'm gonna say it's above us. It's above our our, our pay grade on <laughs> yeah. that one. Oh, Neither wow. one of us are DREs. So and then uh, and then everything is kind of in the hands at that point of of the judge, right? Right. Well, they will write up a report, we will write up a report, and it goes forward through the normal judicial process. Yeah. And it all depends on what the attorneys and the judge and the evidence shows. Yeah. D- depending on the circumstance, that DRE will assist you with their affidavit, which will give you probable cause, along with your own information, to in fact apply for a search warrant for blood. Um, some cases, most people just give blood. It's not a... Not in today's world, that it's not a big deal. Like some of us don't want needles in our arm every two seconds. Yeah. Unfortunately, these people don't seem to care, and uh, they'll get blood versus you going through the warrant. But if wow. needed, you'll go through a warrant. Wow. Yeah. And then the beginning of, uh, and if you're a first time offender, the beginning of the beginning of the pains in the ass, which are so numerous um, from. Your insurance going up, hiring a lawyer, uh, having a, a criminal record affecting your 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 license uh, suspension, uh, getting to work every day, providing for your family. Uh, the list goes goes on and on and on. As far as the dollar amounts, 
who knows who knows at this point i remember years ago it used to be like three thousand dollars i'm betting it's multiplied to who knows ten and, and this 12, is all $1. this is all first time offense what we're talking yes. you, you get into multiple offenses and yeah. it's uh, i just can't even imagine Especially if you're living, you know, a little bit out in the boons and you, you got to get to work. It's always yeah. been a challenge either for DUI or anyone with a suspended license of, uh, they, they got to live. Yeah. This is Vermont, yeah. not like you can hop on the bus. Right. Unfortunately, we're quite a rural state and it makes it difficult for a lot of these people. Sure it does. So, and then when they're out there doing it, they don't think about it. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, after the fact, then they have to sober up and then decide how we're going to live. That's right. Uh, Tell me about this piece of equipment that you have in front of you, Mark. So this is just what's known as as, as a PBT, prelimin preliminary breath test device, otherwise known as an Alco sensor. Mm -hmm. So this is just a, a tool we use roadside to, to help us uh, screening somebody for alcohol intoxication. All right. Or alcohol. Uh, let me see that thing. Uh, it, it's... Little tiny device. Oh, yeah. And you blow into that. So... So it's not like a scan of the forehead. It uh, comes with a little tube that are nice and sealed up. We put the tube on it. And that's the last thing you want to see when you're on the <laughs> so side of the road. Fires up. These are uh, calibrated monthly or so when the officers can get to as close to a month as we can do it to yeah. make sure they're within a certain range. And a person blows into it just like they're blowing up a balloon. Mm -hmm. And it eventually will spit out a, a number. So these here in the state of Vermont, anyways, are, are non-evidentiary. This is just a tool for the officer. So it's a matter of somebody blows into this. If they're below a .08, yeah. we might call them a taxi. We might figure something out because they're not reaching that DUI level according to the law. Right. Um, versus if they're above a .08. Um, legally drunk. Well, not really. Because the only way we can determine legally and uh, evidentiary process, anyways, is with the DMT, which is a much larger machine, which is at, at the barracks, at the office, um, at the sheriff's department. Oh, whatever. that's the thing that's always spinning, right? That's, that's part correct. of it, correct. So yeah. this is just a tool. This c is not admissible in court. It's just something it's for not. us. It is not. With, with a step back, it's not as far as for adults. Correct. Now, with juveniles or a person under the age of 21, now we're dealing with a different issue because we have what's called a .02 law. And if, in fact, if at roadside, if somebody blows, say, .02 or higher, and they're under the age of 21, they then can receive what's, what we call a juvenile DUI. It faces, basically, they got to go through crash in order to get their license back. It's a real nasty that does not does not face wow. criminal charges unless they're over an 08. But if they're between the 02 and 08, this is a general process that we go through gives juveniles a chance or somebody on their under age 21 a chance and they have to go through crash to determine what they've done wrong and how do we deal with this for the future but it doesn't go on the record yes it does oh it does go the, on, the the, record. The, on their motor vehicle record. the motor vehicle yeah. record it's not a criminal record not a criminal um, record in most cases they also get a referral to what we call diversion or the teen alcohol safety program yeah. which i believe has got a new name ysap yeah, use substance, substance abuse. Something. Uh, oh, there's way too many alcohol acronyms. Program, oh, yes. God. Too many acronyms. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is uh, th this is up under the age of 18. Uh, under age of 21. Juvenile. Uh, we call it a juvenile DUI. Okay. That's kind of the term for. It. Uh, under the legal age to be consuming alcoholic beverages. Thank that's you. Correct. That's that's what I was looking at, uh, and an opportunity for, frankly, for these these individuals to. Smarten the hell up. Correct. Yes. They're at the age where alcoholism they should know better. might not have settled in, depending on the individual. Yeah. So right. early intervention is definitely better. And understand uh, yeah. thoroughly what the responsibility and the privilege that they have of operating this 2,000-pound bullet. Well, true story. Down. Or more. <laughs> or more. Depending on the circumstance. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And we're uh, headed into that time of year. We're getting close to graduations for, for schools, for high schools, and we're, this is the time of year we start seeing it. So That's it right uh -huh. there. So uh, can, can, you get, uh, can you get busted, arrested if you're under .08? Let's say you're, you're a lightweight. You're a two-beer two kind of, three-beer kind of guy. You're hammered at .06. What, what the, the law has to do is .08 or higher. Or if we can determine that you're under 
be influenced to the slightest degree for alcohol purposes. So that's where the dexterities doing the roadside roadside um, roadside yeah. tests come into play. Of you know, you might be in 04, but you're stumbling, um, and it shows that should this person have been operating a motor vehicle, they might not have hit that 08 threshold. But right. this is really dangerous for them for yeah. that particular. In most cases, that what we see is let's just say we get somebody it's 30 miles in excess of the speed limit. Then you get the alcohol. Yeah. Obviously, the brain wasn't working clearly to say it was okay to do 30 miles an hour in excess of the speed limit, mm. and there was alcohol on board. You're either dealing with a negligent operation or you can deal with the DUI part of it because now it's an alcohol-involved negligent operation. Wow. A lot of moving parts. A lot, a lot of moving yeah, parts. There's correct. so much here. There's so much. Um, what about, um, you know, do you guys get – how often – not do you get lied to how often you get lied to when you say uh, have you been drinking uh yes your officer how many beers have you had uh two it's always two a couple it's always two <laughs> it's a couple because couple. <laughs> anything more and they know they'd be in trouble anything less they know we're not buying it so yeah you know you get answers all over the place we like to joke that it's always two or a couple but that has a big grain of truth to it yeah and and, and then of course there you know there's mixed drinks and and there's 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 well, liquor, which is a different, you know. There was a gentleman I, I arrested at the Waterbury 4th of July parade a number of years ago, and he swore up and down. He had his wife in the passenger seat who'd just been through surgery. They just wanted to see the fireworks. Swore numerous times he only had one drink. And as the process went out, he was extremely uh, intoxicated. But he had a double Manhattan was his one drink. It's like, oh, oh yeah, that's yeah. different. That was like 10 drinks. Yes. But he just, looked at it as one. You know, just think of what an iced tea is. How many, was there three shots in, in an iced tea? Yeah, Long uh, Island I mean, iced tea, yeah. They don't think about that. They think it's just one, no different some of these beers today. You get into oh, beers, Lord. they're 12%, 14%. Right. Yeah, sure. they put them in these little tiny glasses. Yes. You, you take a sip, yeah. you know why. Yes, right. Wow. That's so That's so interesting. And it's not the not the Budweiser anymore at 3.2 or 3.4%. It's yeah. a lot of these beers are a lot lot more yeah, you're seeing 12 percenters now yeah. good lord what 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 about sobering up i mean how um you know i i know you're trained in this that that your, your biggest friend for sobering up is simply time time yep because it's the liver that's processing yeah. the booze and and that's part of an issue depending on what a person's drinking levels are if somebody drinks a lot their liver ends up uh, not able to process the alcohol the same as it would normally. That's right. Um, as well, the other part is you've got to get to the max before you come back down. So it's very common for people, depending on the circumstance, have they even maxed out when we stop them? Correct. Right. Yeah, they have their last drink, they leave the bar, they're still yeah. on the way up. Yeah. They're on the way up. Wow. So you've got to max out, and then there's somewhat of a – level and they talk about 0 0.015 an hour is what you drop so that takes a while it does yeah. that's not a lot yeah. it's not a lot uh, i mean we talk about it sometimes there's there's people who are have to in term alcoholics that uh, probably wake up at a 2-0 in the morning yeah and then the jump in their car to drive so if if you uh you know if, if you're just getting ready to, li to leave the bar you you've you've had a a drink and you're your or two two drinks and and you're leaving before those drinks have impacted you and you've got a pretty good drive home you're halfway home and you're saying oh my god yeah. should you pull over and ditch your car in a cornfield and run and hide in a tree somewhere <laughs> or, or not is, quite that extreme but uh, find sleep? a place to, find a place to park get off the highway get into the back seat and take a nap Okay. Take Can you get in trouble for that? If, you, if a cop comes up, finds you, you're sleeping in the back seat, hammered. So as uh, long as the keys are in the ignition mm -hmm. and you are not attempting to operate the motor vehicle, mm -hmm. barring extenuating circumstances, mm -hmm. you will... I'm not an attorney, and the attorneys will argue these every day. Yeah. I have arrested people behind the wheel sleeping. Yeah. So it depends on the circumstance and what's going on. Sure. And That's the, the best way to say it. The biggest thing I, I can say is you've you seen this it. before, Brett. Having, oh, <laughs> I can more tell than enough look, times. <laughs> yeah, I can tell by the look in yeah. your face. One, Go ahead. One, yeah, one of the things I know that that's common for us, and 
a lot of it's interviewing the person, talking to the people as far as what they've had to drink. You mentioned, you know, just getting done two drinks and, and heading home with a long ride home. Well, if we stop you, say, for a headlight out or whatever, and we screen you, it's like eh, borderline as far as whether or not we're going to process. We ask for preliminary breath test, the ALCA sensor, and you're an 05, but yet we don't feel there's enough to arrest you for, for being slightly under the influence of alcohol. It's very common, though, for us to say, is there somebody that you can call? Because you got time now, between now and the time you get home, you're still going up. Yeah. And you may be .08 between now the time here till the time you get home. And for one, I don't want you to get involved in a crash. I'm kind of responsible for you. Number two, you could get arrested for DUI if you get stopped again. Exactly. You're, you're doing a, someone a huge favor. That's correct. Just call and wake someone up. If yep. you have to. Yeah, um, before you even leave the bar, if there's any question whatsoever, it, yeah. what's it going to hurt? It, it's so hard to see some of these people to say, call a friend. That's all you had to do is call a friend. And it's no different when we're processing them. you got to call somebody, buddy, because I can't release you because of your alcohol, alcohol level at this present time. And they're like, well, I'd rather go to jail and call somebody. Really? Isn't there somebody <laughs> you can call? Yeah. I mean, I'm, we call it jail, but obviously it's detox that in a situation where right. – if somebody's not safe to be by themselves, we're still responsible for that person. Let's be honest. We're, we're all human beings, whether you've got a, um, a police uniform on or not. We all go to barbecues. We all go to Christmas parties. Um, we all embrace life and celebrate and relax and let loose and have a good time. What do you guys do if you're at a, um, a family gathering, a picnic? picnic a friend's house bonfire whatever um uniforms off you just want to have a good time uh let loose for a little bit uh have have a couple of beers maybe even uh you know not really be too concerned about somebody else is going to drive it's not drinking your wife your girlfriend whoever it may be yeah Yeah, either that or you guys may have that one beer Hmm. and then Space it out so that you're not going and you're not going to be over the limit when it comes time to drive. That's the one thing I've always been in that situation. I don't want to place another officer in a situation where they got to arrest me. Happens all I the made, time. The, unfortunately, it does. Yes. It happens all the time. Yep. Judgment is so subjective. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we, we've all practiced good judgment and maybe bad judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Would, have you ever like uh, said, "Well, I'm gonna just go over to my car and blow into this thing and make sure I'm clear," to, uh, or not? Basically, if I've had more personally, if I've had more than one, I'm not getting behind the wheel. I, period. End of statement. I, I, just no. That's that's the same statement. Wow. I just I'm not taking want, that chance. Right. Wow. Career means too much, and I don't want to put somebody else in the same. In that situation where they got to deal with me. And you have to trust whoever you're with, whether it's your wife, whoever, yep. uh, your buddy, whatever, that they're not drinking and that they're yeah. clean as a whistle. Yeah. Well, I mean, having fun isn't all about having a drink in your hand. Well, that's right. true, too. Yes. That's true, too. Right. Yeah. Wow. Um, back to, to sobering up. Are there, are there faster? And we talked about time. Um, being your your friend, allowing that booze to process through your your liver. Um, but what about six cups of coffee, a cold a cold shower, and uh, what's the trick? Uh, the peanut butter in the mouth or the, the the coffee? You'll have a wide awake drunk person. Yes. Boom. Just think years back when Dunkin' Donuts was here, and leave the bar, go over and get their coffee. So the the food. All of that stuff you hear, all the all these you know suggestions that you can the, the penny you can, under the tongue the will fake penny it, under the will, tongue will fake out the system, and it bread. really comes down to your liver. How yeah. fast does your liver work? Yeah. That's it. Eat a loaf of bread, absorb. <laughs> Mark's laughing at me. Uh, <laughs> eat a whole loaf of bread. Let the <laughs> let the the alcohol is going to absorb into the bread, and it, yeah. If you're using common sense. You're going to have something in your system before you start drinking. Anyways. Well, that's something that's to absorb point. some of the alcohol. That's because a great if not point. that one beer, you might find out it's going to do something to you. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's more things to, yeah. to 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 do, but it's about dealing with the hangover, not so much dealing with the alcohol in your that's system. That's true. What it affect on the numbers? You, you guys, I'm guessing, have have uh, seen 
experienced in uh, how how many years you've been doing this? All of them, and I've been seventeen. <laughs> wow! Thanks. Wow! What, Twenty. Uh, thir- what? Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. I, I'm guessing. In October. I'm guessing in that amount of time for for each of you that you've had situations where you've had to bust somebody, you got them off the road. Um, it's got to be a great feeling that you've just really potentially prevented something horrible from happening. I don't know. Yes. I can't count it on, on one hand. I can tell you that. But if, I wouldn't know the number of people who have come to me afterwards thanking me for what I did. Yeah. That, that arrest saved their life, saved their family, saved their home. And saved some, some innocent person's life, That's too. Correct. correct. Who yeah. knows what might have come yeah. of this. And, and just for those people who think of, I'll say it the right way, think of just themselves, that's fine. But again, you saved them and saved their lives, saved their family, their marriage. It's all these things that it's, it feels good when they come to you and talk to you right. about that. And it, maybe they, they were lucky to get busted by you guys. That's We've had that a few times of, yeah. you know, I thought it ruined my life at the time, but looking back, thank you for doing what you did. Yeah. You know, say how many times wow. have we had it where they've been the pain that night, whether obstinate or whatever the case may be, and they come back and apologized afterwards. That, that's, Once they sobered up. Right. Yeah, and and maybe uh, if there was an underlying, uh, dr- you know, drinking problem that was undiscovered at the time, uh, maybe that was the beginning of... of derailing that Correct. that's pretty i don't want to say common but it's happened yeah. frequently their, their with tolerance kids. level just starts building and they yeah. just don't realize yeah. yeah my goodness what what should you say um to a police officer when you when you get pulled over uh, l- let's just talk uh and we'll wrap it up here with, with just general stops whatever it may be you forgot the signal you rolled three feet through the stop sign, you're driving 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, uh, you didn't know, you weren't trying to be a pain in the ass, but you get pulled over by a police officer. You're frustrated. I didn't do anything wrong, or I didn't realize I was doing anything wrong. Your day, your week has been going like shit, and now you've got a police officer standing next to you. Um, you're having a really bad day. What's what's the, the best way? What what do you say when you get pulled one over? One of the biggest things is just be honest. Honest and respectful. Uh, honest and respectful is right. Just being honest. We obviously know what the violation is. There are certain circumstances where, yes, people did wrong. We all can do it. Or not, not one of us are perfect. By or any did means. wrong and didn't know we were, right. you know. Uh, There's nothing personal in it for us. Right. And some people take, take it, it as a personal attack. And it's just, we're just here to keep everyone safe. And uh, we wouldn't be having this interaction if we didn't see something that we perceived as a problem. Yeah. And these days, everything is recorded. So people get really upset and they want to see the recording and they want to know this and that. There's a time and place for arguing, but roadside yeah. isn't it. It's a matter of answer the officer's questions, be courteous, mm. and if you disagree with the outcome or you want to see certain things, the time and place for that is down the road when we're not in the middle of the roadway talking. Yeah. It's very very common for us to go and say, we don't want to discuss this here at Roadside, but more than pleased, you can contact me at the, the Sheriff's Department. I'm more than happy to talk to you about the situation after the fact. This is just not the place and time for it. Have you been called names? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. In, in a lot of cases, we're a venting post for people. Yep. Depending what do you on do? the circumstance, and it's understandable and determined. Part, depending of, on the, part of your training is to not respond or react or, or take personally if, if you get verbally attacked correct. or yep. whatever. But I'm, I'm sure there's been a few times where you want to pull some knucklehead out of their car. and <laughs> Known to happen every now and then. Yes. Put the knuckles to them. Yeah. yeah. It's more often. <laughs> we are used as a venting post in yeah. a lot of cases, and and like you have said, to let that you have to let that shit just slide right off your shoulders. Unfortunately, we do, and Oof. we've said for years, especially when we teach new trainees, you, we don't write attitude tickets. Right. People ah. can be terrible to us, 
and it will have no effect on why we're there or what the outcome of the stop will be. The violation has to do with what the, what's at face in front of you, not how the person is treating you. Ooh. Which can be really tough because sometimes when you have the option of there's, you can, you know, we call it writing a book of tickets when they've done all these things wrong. And we usually just write a couple. But when that attitude comes out, is it tempting to, to write the book? You betcha. But most of us um, in advance, we know what we're going to do and what the outcome will be before we even interact. Yeah. So. And, and honestly, you're frankly just doing your job and you, you just want right, to get right. on. Get on with. We're doing our job. Your we'll day. Go home at the end of the day. We're human, just like, like the person we're stopping. Hmm. Now, have I been given a ticket? You betcha. I've been in their yeah. shoes. I have so. been as well. Really? Absolutely. If you, if you have no life experience before you come out, become an officer, it can be a little problematic. But those of us who start when we're a little older, then, Amen. oh, yeah, we've been there, done that. Wow. That's what, that's what, I, what I said about you guys earlier on the air this morning, is that you're, you're regular guys. And I think um, I like that. Uh, I think Vermonters like that. Uh, uh, they like to know that their their police officers are, are human are, beings. You're human beings. <laughs> you got a uniform on. You got a uniform off. Uh, you, you're a human being. You, you have family. You have uh, folks that you love that you go home to at the at the end of the day, and you're just doing your job. Policing in Vermont. Do you think that we're um, are we getting there? Do do we do we have a staffing shortage do we need more police we officers do. Um, terribly it's we're seeing some change to it but obviously not fast enough for one we don't have our academy is just trying to keep up and trying to get people into the academy is difficult alone so yes short this the shortage for staffing itself is developed by our academy trying to get people through and being able to keep up with those that are retiring and, right. and backfilling. <laughs> what, 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 what if you're in high school, uh, you're thinking about the police academy, what, what, do, you, what do you do? So uh, Outside of talking with a, you know, a, a school, uh, uh, you know, uh, advisor. Yeah, come talk with us. <laughs> come, come talk with us, and do you want to go on to college and get a degree or not? We try to recommend that. It, go get a degree in something. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even necessarily have to be criminal justice. Right. Um, it can be in anything. Just these days, that piece of paper is very helpful. Um, if you don't want to go that route, it's a matter of f- talking to different officers from different departments um, and, and getting a little bit of life experience because this job is definitely not for en- everybody. And there have been, a we've heard numerous times and seen it ourselves, somebody goes to college, they get a CJ degree, they come out, they want to be an officer, they go through the academy, which is you know four or five months worth of work, hit the road, and six months later they quit because, eh, it's just not for me. Yeah. So 17 weeks at the academy, then coming out and say it's not for me. Wow. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because there's. It's a huge commitment. A huge sure. commitment. Yeah. And you're investing that much time. Yeah, yeah. I was say. And you're not going to get rich doing this. It's got to be something that you have to have the willingness to want to do it and want to be part of the communities. If you well, guys, if, if you guys ever just frankly wished that you weren't a cop some days i don't know there's no. a couple things i've seen that's like i do not get paid enough for this oh my god yeah, yeah. i'm sure I, so. I will say i'll agree with him on that aspect but uh doing a job i love it and, yeah you know obviously i'm at my come to my end but uh i still love the job yeah we wouldn't be here if we didn't i gotta say that's correct we wouldn't it, be sitting here if we, it's definitely not for everybody but uh the rewards you can get out of it are pretty amazing yeah I bet. I know you have uh, a lot of stuff going on. You guys don't uh, punch in and punch out every day. You have a lot of stuff happening. It's it's twenty four seven. I think it's uh, I think it's imperative that uh, you guys are bridging the gap. And Farva does a great job of this as well uh, between. Uh, relations with the civilian population and the police population bridging that gap bringing the two together to say uh hey man we're all on the same page here um first and foremost safety and 
and prevention. Um, but we don't get paid to be um, a thorn in your side. We we're out there for for purpose mm -hmm. and for reason. And the laws have been put in place for a reason, and we all we all have to follow those laws. Sometimes we might not like them, but they yeah. are what they are yeah. until they're changed. Right. So. Click it or ticket again. It starts Monday, May twenty third. Runs through June fifth. Not to say that June sixth, you don't have to wear your seatbelt. Not we, to say today you don't have to wear your seatbelt. We are looking for them today. every day. Yeah. Yes, That's this is correct. just a concentrated effort. That's uh, correct. We'll uh, have uh, different areas that we'll be hitting each day, and concentrating in different areas. We'll see increased enforcement out. And that will be statewide, actually nationwide, nationwide. but uh, nationwide, um, definitely statewide. We have. A uh, number of different campaign, a uh, number of different uh, teams that are going out to do this enforcement in different areas. Be safe. Thank you. Thank and you. And I, I think uh, click it or ticket is is a re reminder if you do get a ticket uh, that you got a full summer ahead of you of uh, windows down, top down, music up, uh, but buckle up and and be safe more than anything. Main thing is we want everybody to be safe. We don't like picking people up from the side of the road with a sponge. Yeah. So. Good stuff, guys. Thank you both. Thanks Thank so. you. So much for coming in. Uh, Mark Poulin, Brett Meyer, Washington County Sheriffs uh, with us. Police Week. And don't forget, Friday, uh, Chief Buzz Dodge going to be with us at uh, 930 Friday morning. And then at 11 o'clock, our Barry City Chief, Brandon Vale. We'll be uh, sitting down on the podcast as well. Thanks for catching Aired Out live from the ASB Financial Studios and Fly in the Wall Productions, Main Street, Barry, Vermont. There's our sponsors right there in front of you. Thank them next time you see them for supporting Aired Out.